Détective Hercule Poirot Ah, Chief Commissioner. On the contrary, it is a most convenient time. The safe passage of a painting. Tell me everything. If man was meant to travel the oceans in such conditions, he would surely have been given his own fins. A distraction is what one needs. Where is that blasted contact? How is one to prepare for an assignment if one does not have all of the required information? Very well. I shall wait no longer. Beautiful, isn't she? Pardon, monsieur? The open water. There really is nothing quite like her. When one suffers from the mal de mer, the beauty, as you say, is rather more a burden. Forgive me, I just can't imagine being scared of the ocean in this day and age. The potential to see the world is open to even the ordinary man like us. I can assure you, monsieur, it is not a matter of being scared. And as for ordinary... I didn't mean to offend, mister. I am... Um, Forgive me, madame. No harm done. Accidents happen. I... My cigarette case. Where is it? I didn't see. You thought I wouldn't notice? A young lady traveling alone. An easy target for you, I bet. I'm sure the young lady would appreciate the help of two handsome strangers.
How could a porter be so clumsy? Let's give her a hand. How could a porter be so clumsy? Let's give her a hand. A young lady should not be left to gather her own things. You are returning home? I am. But how did you know that? Besides your educated accent, the crest that adorns your cigarette case, it is of British origin. Very observant. It's the crest of my family, and the case belonged to my mother. I take it everywhere with me. Miss Florence Farquhar, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. The pleasure is ours. That looks like everything. Except for my powder case. Is this what you're looking for? It is. Thank you, Miss... Miss Babanin. Anastasia Babanin. Anastasia? What a beautiful name. It was my grandmother's. Well, that's everything now. I can't thank you all enough for your help. I'd be happy to escort you. Here, I'll take your bag. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Cabin 4. I'll be right behind you. Anastasia, perhaps I can offer you a token of my gratitude in the bar later? That would be lovely. And you, Mr... Detective Hercule Poirot, at your service. A detective? I was not expecting to meet such a distinguished gentleman on board. I did not expect to meet someone of Russian descent on a ship between the great city of Antwerp and Dover. I never mentioned where I was from either. One did not have to... Anastasia, of Russian origin meaning resurrection. And here was me, thinking I was special. Your knowledge of my heritage is most impressive. And I'll take that as my cue to leave. Good evening. It seems it's just us remaining. I would very much like to hear stories from your homeland. Perhaps you would join me in the restaurant. As charming as that would be, I'm feeling rather tired. It must be all the sea air. Then I shall leave you to your slumber. Adieu. By the delights of the restaurant, I still found my mind drifting back to Mademoiselle Babania. I have spent the first part of this excursion neglecting my duties. It's time to retrieve my notebook from the safe and begin. The combination was not a difficult one to remember. 1815, the Battle of Waterloo. Huh. Et voilà. Time to... One cannot ignore such a blood-curdling scream. My mother's cigarette case! It's gone! How could somebody do this? Mademoiselle, I ask that you take a moment to calm. You're a detective, of course. What luck! As luck would have it. One of Belgium's finest. Now, I require as many details of the crime as you can offer. I came to my cabin and began unpacking. I couldn't get the safe working, but the gentleman that helped me with my luggage showed me how it works. Afterwards, I went for a brief walk, and when I returned, the safe was open, and my cigarette case was gone. We must consider the suspect list. Those who were aware of the cigarette case's existence. That can only be those who were up on the deck when my luggage spilled. Miss Babanyan, the porter, yourself. And your helpful stranger. Yes, of course. I ask that you gather them for me. And while you are absent, I shall begin my investigation in here, if Mademoiselle permits. 
whatever you need to do to find it. Mademoiselle, I thought you would be returning with the gentleman also. The gentleman wanted to speak to the porter alone, first. I was unaware he is also a detective. He's not a policeman. He works in insurance, I believe. It appears I shall be spending my time chasing amateur detectives around the ship. Mademoiselle, I would like to start with who had access to the safe combination. No one. It was in a sealed envelope that was waiting for me when I arrived. I memorized it and threw the paper overboard. Four, three, eight, five. It's really not that difficult to remember. A similar envelope was waiting for me upon my arrival. The date of the Battle of Waterloo, as I recall. Every safe, although identical, must have a different combination. After the gentleman helped me with the safe, he left. If the mysterious gentleman is behind the theft, he went to great lengths to hide his fingerprints but did little to hide his movements in Mademoiselle Farquhar's cabin. There are many questions that require answers, answers I believe he may hold. of the puzzle are finally coming together. Mademoiselle Farquhar, I shall have your cigarette case returned to you before we reach the English coast. I hope so, detective. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. Mademoiselle Babagnan, I'm sorry we must continue our conversation under these circumstances. On the contrary. What fantastic luck that you are here. Now I get to see you at work. You have been most helpful, mademoiselle. I shall not take up any more of your time. Aha. Hmm. 
I'm sorry, but it's just not acceptable, Mark. I've apologized to the lady. And that makes everything all right? It was an accident. An accident that could have been avoided if you hadn't spent your morning drinking. Gentlemen, you are behaving like two young boys in the schoolyard. It ends now. Is Mademoiselle Farquhar aware you are acting as her knight in shining armor? I wouldn't go as far as that. I think perhaps we have got off on the wrong foot. I'm Arthur Hastings. Would... She requested you to follow her to her cabin, no? Oh, yes, she did, but I wanted to... speak with the porter privately? This was part of your investigation? Well, I'm not a detective. I was just, uh... Then perhaps you will answer some questions that are vital to my investigation as a detective. What can I do for you? It is. Is my employment relevant to Miss Farquhar's missing cigarette case? I hope you will entertain me for a moment. What would you say the chances of proving a theft in a case such as this one are? Well, a report from a detective like yourself will certainly help expedite her insurance claim. As I thought. It had perhaps not crossed her mind before, but being amongst an officer of the law and an insurance man, the idea of insurance fraud may have appeared appealing. When Florence... Miss Farquhar... told me that something had gone missing from her safe, I thought it must have been the porter. How so? I'd rather not say with him standing just there. It is not I that controls the volume of your voice. You must have noticed the smell of beer on his breath. I wouldn't put it past a man that drinks on the job to steal. 
That is quite the accusation. And if you were correct, you wish to settle the matter with him privately? I'm what some would call a middleman. I oversee the handling of recently sold items and put the buyer in contact with an appropriate insurer. The mention of insurance initially sparked my attention. But the more he talks of his work, I believe he may be my mysterious contact from Lloyd's of London. It was your work that took you to Belgium? I can't go into too many details, but I'm actually delivering a rather special piece of art to London. I'm meant to be meeting an official of some sorts that's supposed to be helping me, but no sign of them yet. And it is confirmed. It concerns me that my supposed trusted colleague has found himself involved in the middle of my investigation. I will continue to withhold my true identity and see how Monsieur Hastings' involvement concludes. Merci, Monsieur. This really is an exciting case. Anything I can do to help Miss Farquhar, please don't hesitate to ask. Your enthusiasm has been noted. Ah. Perhaps you and I can have a more civilized discussion. I'll tell you the same as I told your friend. I will not be bullied. Intimidation is not my forte. What is, is uncovering the identity of criminals and making sure they are punished to the fullest extent of the law. And that's me? That is what I am yet to conclude. Who said anything about drinking alcohol? It does not take a detective to identify the distinct odor on one's breath. Maybe one to calm my nerves. My sea legs aren't here yet, that's all. I was in the cargo hold, cutting something with my knife, and it slipped. No harm done. I'm not quite sure you understand what that means. So now I am a stupid and a drunk? Do you have the knife in question on your person now? I don't. He stole it and won't return it.
You could ask me anything. I'm afraid I've done very little, actually. After we parted ways, I went to my cabin. I had barely unpacked and I was fast asleep on the bed. Alone? That is a rather personal question, don't you think? That I I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. A poor attempt at a joke. Yes, I was alone. There is no need to be nervous. And then? And then I was woken up by Florence's scream. I have never heard something so terrifying. You have been most helpful, mademoiselle. I shall not take up any more of your time. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Hmm. Oui, oui monsieur. I shall let you return to your duties.
Of course. Whatever you need. Insured? Oh no, why would I have it insured? Anything of substantial monetary value. Not for a second. At least not with my permission. You probably think this silly, naive woman has left her valuables out, or I've just misplaced them. But I assure you, that is not me. It had not crossed my mind for even a moment. You caught me. Reading my own article. I must say you raise a very interesting point. Art should have no social boundaries. Creativity is for all to win. Yes, I'm really quite excited about it. You have been invited to a preview at the Royal Edward Gallery. A small world indeed. Will you be in attendance? It's actually one of the reasons that I have been in Belgium. I was lucky enough to have a sneak peek at some of the pieces on show. I'll also be writing a follow-up article on the success of it. Fingers crossed! Lucky indeed. I am sure it will be a great success. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. One step closer to revealing the truth. You could ask me anything. You have been most helpful, mademoiselle. I shall not take up any more of... Magnifique. A fingerprint. Now to... You found one, detective? Oh, how exciting! I suppose you'll want to take mine. To rule me out, I mean.
Oh. Of course. Whatever you need. Of course. What? Merci, mademoiselle. You could ask me any. Am I to be used as your guinea pig? I would not dare compare you to a guinea pig. Would you be so kind? The answer is yes, of course. I have nothing to hide. become clearer. Something just does not feel right. Order and method, that is the way. Act on thought and f hot on the culprit's heels. was staring me in the face. I must consider the suspects I have in front of me. Monsieur Hastings. He is keen to impress Mademoiselle Farquhar and claims that he was alone in his cabin working since. Mark Allard, the porter. Evidence suggests a rather amateur attempt to break into the safe, which in his intoxicated state would make sense. But it was just a ruse. The safe was opened quite masterfully, leaving only signs of a poorly attempted break-in. Mademoiselle Babagna, a new friend to Mademoiselle Farquhar, who appeared at a most convenient time. I cannot see a motive besides the obvious value of the cigarette case, but Mademoiselle Farquhar has made it quite clear the value is of a sentimental nature. Perhaps the best thing for me would be to return to my cabin to think. I fear my legs and perhaps even my evening meal will not last much longer amidst these waves. Perhaps. Ah, detective. How goes the investigation? A good detective, better yet, a great detective, 
We'll find motive, means, and opportunity. She found it! Miss Babanyan found it! Oh, thank heavens! I was on my way to speak with the captain, when I saw something shining underneath one of those pipes. Strange that it was not spotted earlier by any one of us while on the ship's deck. Maybe the thief was scared and dumped it for fear of being caught red-handed. Miss Babanyan, Anastasia, you saved the day. I can't thank you enough. And you, of course, detective. I find Mademoiselle Babanyan's explanation of finding the cigarette case rather coincidental. But without any definitive proof, I cannot suggest anything otherwise. The cigarette case has been returned and the coast is in sight, which is what is important. Although, there still remains a part of me that craves the truth. I suppose you can chalk that up as a victory. A victory for Mademoiselle Farquhar, but not in the eyes of the law. Well, if anyone asks, I'll confirm what a splendid job you did. Very kind, monsieur. While we are on the matter of truth, Monsieur Arthur Hastings, you are here to oversee the transportation of the penitent Magdalene painting, are you not? How on earth? You are aware of my employment, but not of my true identity. Detective... Wait, are you the official that I was supposed to have met on board? Oui, monsieur. Please, accept my apologies for keeping my true identity hidden. But I had to be sure your involvement with the theft was purely coincidental. When it comes to the nature of our work, trust must be earned. A little unorthodox, but I suppose I understand. So you can trust me now? It continues to grow. Well, we have a couple of weeks before the gala, so hopefully by then you'll trust me with your life. One can hope. stop being amazed seeing such incredible pieces up close. One would certainly hope not. Huh. Ah. Huh.
do you gentlemen think of this particular piece? Can it really be? To a layman, perhaps. I'm afraid it's a complete fake. No. Such eloquent and delicate work. Very observant. But that doesn't make it authentic. You know, see if you can spot the telltale sign of a forger. Hmm. Huh. Aha. The crackler is inconsistent across the painting. Surely a sign of a cheap imitation. Very impressive, detective. Unconvincing aging is one of the most common giveaways of a forgery, whether it be in the crackler, the smells of chemicals used to artificially age the painting, pigments that haven't dulled with age. Sometimes it's as simple as the materials used, just not existing at the time of painting. The trustees were quite excited by its arrival, but it didn't take me long to identify its faults. Quite the detective yourself, Mademoiselle Warbeck. Please, call me Evelyn. If there's one thing I've learned in the short time I've spent with the detective here, formalities and politeness are essential. They are a cornerstone of modern civilization and must be upheld. This city could benefit from more gentlemen like yourself. Now that the etiquette of our greetings has been decided, shall we finalize preparations? I was hoping you'd say that. The exhibition area needs to be secured. I wonder if you would be able to lock the remaining doors for me? I'll lock the west wing door when I'm finished there. And if you could tie this ribbon around the handles of the main door for me, I'll leave it outside. If securing the exhibition room is what Mademoiselle Warbeck requires, that is what shall be done. Oh. Make it look pretty. One shall complete the task to the degree it is requested. Symmetry is the key, you see. Oh yes, I see. Everything is now ready for the arrival of the guests. I assume you have the list of guests? I am afraid not would usually be an essential part of my preparation. In fact, it perturbs me that there is something I did not have time to prepare for. Would you like me to find Miss Warbeck? There may still be some time to check the list. Look, there's Miss Farquhar. With Miss Babinin. Seems that they became fast friends after the incident on the ship. Intriguing. Intriguing how? Speculation, monsieur. Nothing more. That head of yours is just constantly full of thoughts. Who's this? I have no idea. But she's sure to turn heads with such a fetching dress. I quite agree. And who is this dapper-looking gentleman? Mon Dieu! Wait a minute. Is that... Well, I never! Poirot, you devil! Forgive me. Where are my manners? Detective Poirot. Goodness, Monsieur Demir. Poirot is more than adequate for an old friend. He saves my family from near ruin, uncovers a murderous plan, and still has the modesty to not correct a buffoon like me. Allow me to introduce myself. Heavens, my manners appear to have been replaced by surprise and excitement. Forgive me. Monsieur Demir, 
This is Monsieur Arthur Hastings. You've got yourself a partner now. Well, any friend of Poirot's is surely a friend of mine. Monsieur Hastings has been kind enough to show me the sights of London. A more than adequate guide. I would take that. It's as often as a blue moon you see Poirot handing out approvals like that. And what is it you do, Mr. Demir? A previous field medic, Monsieur Demir now finds himself working for... Pardon. With his brother, doing most honorable charitable work all across London. Need I say more? Could everyone gather together for a photograph, please? Would you all move a bit closer together for me, please? I didn't realize we were going to be in the newspaper. Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just want the camera to get my best side. Okay, if everyone is ready. So, Puaro, what on earth are you doing here anyway? My orders were to see to the safe travel of the centerpiece of the exhibition, the Penitent Magdalene. Monsieur Hastings here travels with me, covering any administrations and insurance requirements. Art protection? That's a bit beneath the great Hercule Poirot, isn't it? Especially protecting it from this lot. Perhaps you would be so kind as to introduce us. Ah, where's the fun in that? We have to make sure those... What's it you call them again? You are referring to my little grey... Little grey cells, yes! Ah, that's it. I've been playing a little game. I've been trying to find a painting to match each of the guests. At least the ones I'm acquainted with. I wonder, Poirot, do you think you can ascertain which paintings match which guests? Ah, oh, I can give you a little info, but you'll need to make your own inquiries. Miss Irene Kortsmeyer. She is one you'll want to keep your eye on in the future art scene. Born and raised on a rather affluent estate, she turned her back on her parents in her teens to start a new life in London as an artist. She's a very nice young lady. Ah, really? Interested, are we? I was only making a comment on her nature, nothing untoward, I can assure you. Or as we are all meant to refer to him as, the Honorable Reverend Horace Mountjoy. He's a man of the church. I'm not sure what else there is to say. If you're wanting to keep the lectures to a minimum, I'd avoid admitting to anything that would even be considered a sin. Ah, Mortimer Aylesworth. If you've not heard of him, I'd get familiar with the name. Eton and Cambridge educated, he followed in his father's political footsteps, and has already surpassed them. Johann Christiansen and his glamorous wife Betty Allen. Betty Allen, the actress? The very same. They've been here in London for a few years, although she still plays down her boldness for British society. She did not take his name in marriage? Allen is her maiden name. Works as her stage name, too. A lot snappier than Chris Jensen. And his employment? He's a partner for a private bank in London. He has told me what he actually does many times before. And many times, I forgot. You will no doubt already know our host, Evelyn Warbeck. We have already made her acquaintance. Very pleasant, if not rather flustered by today's exhibition. That's everyone. Well... There's Mr. Hastings here. I'm sure we shall get to know each other better. And Anastasia Babana. We met briefly while traversing the channel. Look at you, Poirot. Got a love interest of your own, huh? Monsieur Demir, must I remind you of why I am here? No. No need at all. <laughs> I know your strictly business. Let's see what you can do then. And come back to me when you know enough about the guests to solve my little mystery.